This is the assembly instructions for the Patriot Sawmill. We recommend that you watch the video at least a couple times prior to assembly. Read the manual, there's a lot of good information in there, and get familiar with some of the parts of the sawmill prior to assembly, it will make it much easier for you. It is best to have a large area where you can unpack your mill and lay out the parts so they can be seen plainly. Remove the sides and, and the ends of the crate with a hammer. Unpack the boxes and lay them out. When you get to all the boxes out, you can cut the straps that are holding the mill head to the pallet and then slide the head off of the pallet onto the floor. Once you have removed the head from the pallet, set the track sections to the side and get the pallet out of your way. Here is the list of tools that you will need for the assembly of your sawmill. Open all your parts boxes one by one and lay out the parts so they can be clearly seen. All the bags are marked clearly with the parts inside. Keep the hardware in the marked bags until it's time to use it. With all your boxes open and your parts laid out, you're now ready to start the assembly. Step number one, installing the winch on the frame. Place the winch on the frame using the provided hardware drawing it closer to the rear as you mount it. After mounting it, tighten all the nuts and bolts to secure it to the frame. Next, you're going to install the winch crank handle. Using a pair of vice grip, grip the lower shaft on the winch as shown. Remove the bolt, washer, and spring from the stud. Holding the lower shaft with the vice grip, screw the handle onto the winch. Then replace the bolt, spring, and washer and tighten. Step number two, installing the three lift cable pulley assemblies. Unpack and lay out the cable pulleys and bolts as shown. There are two single wheel assemblies and one double wheel assembly in your kit. In the kit you'll notice one bolt is longer than the other two. That one is for the double cable pulley assembly. Be sure to use the fiber washers on the outsides of each cable pulley. Install the first cable wheel directly in front of the winch in the bracket. Tighten securely. Be sure that the pulley will turn. Install the next cable pulley just below to the side of the first one. This is a single pulley also. On the opposite side of the head you will be installing the double cable pulley assembly. Be sure to put the fiber washer between the two pulleys and one at each end of the assembly. Tighten securely and make sure that they will turn freely. Step number three, installing the two eye bolts on the mill head. First put a nut on each eye bolt, leaving about three quarters of an inch of threads exposed at the top of each eye bolt. Then put a flat washer on each one. Put the eye bolts into the mounting brackets on the mill frame. Then put the washer, lock washer, and nut on the eye bolts and tighten securely into place. Step number four, installing the lift cables. The lift cable kit has two cables in it, one long one and one shorter one. We will be using the long one first with the eyelet in the end of it. Secure the long cable with the eyelet in the end of it. Insert the running end of the cable into the winch as shown in the video. Secure the eyelet to the winch drum as shown using the tab on the outside of the drum to secure it to the winch drum. Next you'll be threading the cables through the lift pulleys. First go through the top pulley across from the winch, then over to the left side, down through the pulley on the right of the mill as you are standing on that side of the mill. Straight down to the eye bolt, then slide two cable clamps onto the cable before passing the cable through the eye bolt. Then secure the running end of the cable with the two cable clamps. To remove the slack from the cable, 
Crank the winch while holding the cable to take up the slack. Leave about two inches of the running end past the cable clamps. Using your vice grips, grab the running end of the cable and pull the remaining slack out of the cable and then tighten your cable clamps securely. Once you have this cable taut, secure three more cable clamps and put them on the cable going across the top of the mill. Then secure the short cable. Run it up from the bottom of the outside double pulley as shown. Using the three cable clamps, secure that cable to the other cable leaving a tail about one and a half inches long. Now run the cable across the mill down to the opposite side lift pulley to the other eyeball on the opposite side of the sawmill. Again, slide the two cable clamps onto the cable before going to the eyeball, then go through the eyeball and back up to the cable and secure it with the cable clamps. At this time it's best to put a little lube on your slide tubes before raising and lowering the head. Lube both sides of the mill. Step 5. Installing the 1 inch off deck bolts. Crank the winch so that the head will go up roughly to the middle of the sawmill. Then thread the 1 inch off deck bolts in the bracket from the bottom side up. Leave about 1 inch between the end of the bolt to the machine frame as shown. Then install the locking jam nut. Do not tighten it, just snug it firmly. You will have to adjust these later. Step 6. Installing the tensioner bolt and grease fittings. The tensioner bolt is the half inch by four inch long bolt golden color in your kit. In the kit you will also have two cupped washers and a thrust bearing. Install the bolt first, then place the first cup washer on the bolt with the smooth side toward the mill head. Then the thrust bearing sure goes on. Put a little grease on the thrust bearing at this time. Then put your second cup washer over the thrust bearing. Spin the nut on and leave about one inch of threads exposed from the end of the bolt. Secure the two Zerk grease fittings and install them into the pre-drilled holes on the slide rails of the head. Step 7. Installing the main bearings and band wheels. Install the band wheel on the adjustable side first. The same side that the winch is on or the operator side of the sawmill. Lay out your hardware so it is easy to get to when you're installing the bearings. Using the bolts provided, put a washer on each bolt first and drop it into the main bearing bolt holes on the frame. Bring the preset band wheel assembly up to the bottom side of the mill head frame. Line up the bearing bolt holes to the bearings. Install your flat washer, lock washer and nut. Now look and make sure the wheel is setting square with the frame. Pull back on the wheel assembly as you snug the bolts up. Do not tighten the bolts at this time. Installing the drive side band wheel pulley. Put the belt in between the band wheel mounts before putting the band wheel into place. Then repeat the same steps as before on the other side to mount the band wheel assembly into place. Again, do not tighten the bolts, just snug them up. At this time you'll have to check your wheels for plumbness. You'll have to do this on each wheel, make sure they're plumb. If it is not plumb, you'll have to add the shim underneath the bearing to bring it into plumbness. Recheck it after you get the shim in there. Step number eight, install the main bearing adjusting bolts. Use the adjusting bolts from your kit. Install a nut on each one, screw it on until it's about one inch from the head of the bolt. Do this on all bolts. Put a washer on each bolt, slide the bolt through the hole in the bracket in front of each bearing, and then put the washer and nut on. Screw it hand tight, leave them loose. Step nine, engine preparation. The engine comes completely assembled. All you will have to do is just put the provided engine oil in it and install the clutch onto the crankshaft. Locate the quart of oil that was shipped with your engine and put it into the engine. 
Make sure to check the engine oil after you install the oil to make sure it is to the proper level. Now we will be installing the clutch. Start by removing the shipping bolt, tape, and key off of the crankshaft. Wipe the crankshaft down to remove any excess oil from shipping. Next, locate the 1 inch clutch spacer shipped with your kit. Slide the spacer onto the shaft and lock tight the set screw. Put the key into the keyway on the shaft of the engine. Once the key is in the shaft, you can slide the clutch onto the shaft. It should slide easily onto the shaft. Use Loctite on the threads of the bolt. Screw the bolt into the end of the crankshaft and tighten it securely. Step number 10, mounting the engine into the millhead. Set the engine onto the engine mounting plate of the millhead. Install the four engine bolts, but do not tighten yet, allowing it to stay square with the engine plate. Then snug up the bolts to hold the engine into place. Next, you will align the band wheels and the clutch. You will use a straight edge and run it from the edge of the clutch down to the drive wheel to get the correct belt alignment. The straight edge should be flush and square with the outside edge of the clutch to the outside edge of the band wheel. Tighten the bearing bolts and the engine bolts when aligned. Step 11. Installing the belt tensioner wheel. Put one flat washer onto the bolt. Insert the bolt into the bracket, then put two more of the 3 8 washers on the bolt on the front side of the bracket. Then you will put the wheel onto the bolt. Use the small flat washer and secure with the nut. Keep in mind that you may need to add or subtract a washer to get the correct alignment. Set your pulley halfway up the adjust bar. Now you will put the belt on to check alignment and tension. Start by looping one end around the clutch over the top of the idler wheel, then bring it up around to the top of your band wheel. Roll the band wheel and the belt will run onto the pulley. Now turn the band wheel in the normal direction of travel to check alignment of the belt on your idler wheel. If the belt is going to one side or the other, you will have to remove or add washers on the inside of your idler pulley. When the belt is nearing the top of the pulley, there should be approximately a two finger space between the top of the belt and the bottom of the inside pulley. If the belt is too loose at this point, loosen your tensioner pulley up and move it up about a quarter of an inch and retighten it. Run the belt on now and check your tension. You're looking for about one half inch to no more than one inch of free play on the belt. And at the same time, double check your alignment on your idler wheel. Step number 12, drill and countersink one set screw for each bearing collar. Each bearing has two set screws on the collar. Remove one set screw from each bearing collar and lock tight the threads and put it back into the bearing and tighten it securely. Then you will remove the other set screw on the bearing collar. This one will need to be drilled and countersunk into the shaft. This prevents the shaft from locking during operation. You will need to use a 3 16 inch drill to countersink the shaft for the set screws. One on each bearing will be countersunk. Drill into the shaft approximately 1 8 of an inch to create a dimple for the set screw to seat into. Lock tight the set screw and replace it into the bearing collar and lock it to the shaft. You will do this on both sides of the machine. Step 13. Add fuel and test the engine. Use non-ethanol gasoline only. Once you have put fuel in the engine, turn the engine switch to the on position. Make sure the fuel shutoff is in the on position also. 
put the choke in the choke position, pull the engine over with the recoil rope to start it. Once the engine starts, move the choke forward to the off position. Let the engine idle for a minute. Then move the throttle lever forward to the full throttle position. Keep your hands and any loose clothing clear from any moving parts. At this time, look and make sure that the belt is aligned properly. The belt should be centered on the idler wheel. If the belt rolls or flips on the pulley at this time, you will have to do a realignment on the idler pulley. After running full throttle for about a minute, move the throttle all the way down to the idle position. At this time, the belt should not be turned. If the band wheel is still turning on low idle, you will have to adjust the engine idle screw. Back the screw out to slow the engine down until the wheel stops turning. Now you have set the idle. Turn the engine off. Step 14. Installing the band blade. Use a good pair of leather gloves when handling the bandsaw blades. Be careful when uncoiling the bandsaw blades because they are very sharp. When installing the blade, be sure the teeth are pointing away from the engine. The back side of the blade should be flush with the back side of the band wheel on each side of the mill. Once your blade is flush on both sides of the band wheels, you will now tension the blade. Set your torque wrench at 35 foot-pounds and torque the blade up to 35 foot-pounds. Once you have the torque set, turn the band wheel in the normal direction of travel and check the back side of your band wheels. If there is a lip on the back edge of the band wheels, adjust the bearing by tapping the bearing with a hammer and a punch to move the band wheel into alignment. Rotate the band wheel in the normal direction of travel several times again to check the back edges of your blade for alignment. Now it's time to torque the bearings into place. The torque setting is at 74 foot-pounds on all eight of the bearing bolts. Next, we will set the bearing adjustment bolts in place. Make sure that the head of the bolt is up against the bearing. Then tighten the two jam nuts up against the bracket. This will ensure that the bearing cannot move and to make minor adjustments. Step 15. Install the blade guides. Lay out your blade guide kit. Secure the long black bar. The end with the hole in it goes toward the center of the mill. The hole needs to be horizontal when you install it. Screw the set bolt into the top of the guide bar bracket. Then insert the pin so the L shape is going upward toward the outside of the mill. Slide the guide assembly onto the end of the pin. Then slide the guide onto the blade leaving about an eighth of an inch gap between the back of the blade and the guide bearing. At the same time, you should level your guide. The guide should be level and the blade should be centered on the guide bearing as shown here. To adjust the guide shoes, loosen the Allen screw on the front of the guide. Gently push up on the blade guide shoe to the blade. Then retighten the Allen screw. You can also use a piece of paper or a dollar bill between the guide shoe and the blade as a gauge. Make sure that the blade moves freely through the guide shoes. Next, we will install the fixed guide on the opposite side of the sawmill. Following the same steps as you did installing the first guide assembly. Once your guides have been set, be sure to tighten all the bolts securely. When finished installing the guides, move back over to the movable guide assembly and then install the lube bracket on top of it. Step number 16. Install the end guards and the blade guard. You can install the decals on your guards prior to mounting them on the sawmill. Secure 
the plastic washers from your hardware kit and put them on the studs before installing the blade guard plate. Set the blue guard over the studs, then put the red guard over the top of that. Put the nuts on and then tighten them. Slide the end guard on the studs and secure them using the big washer, lock washer and nut. Snug up the nuts good but do not over tighten. Step 17. Mounting the track wheels. Lay out the track wheel hardware. Look at the track wheels. There will be a snap ring that holds the bearing in on one side of each wheel. That side of the wheel will be facing inward toward the frame of the sawmill. Slide the track wheel into the bolt. Install two shim washers, then the large washer. Screw the bolt and wheel assembly into the track wheel hole on the mill frame and tighten. Do this for all four track wheels. Then check the distance between the track wheels. It should be 27 and a quarter inches across from the outside edge of one track wheel to the inside edge of the other track wheel. If the distance is incorrect, remove or add a shim where it is needed. Step 18, track assembly. Lay the two six foot sections of track end to end on the floor. Make sure that the backstop tabs are on the same side. Using the bolts provided, bolt the two sections of track together, making sure that the top of both sections are perfectly flush where they come together and on the sides. Do not tighten the bolts, just snug them at this time. Check your track to make sure it is level. When setting the track up outside, blocking or shimming will be required to achieve levelness of the sawmill track. Always be sure that the top edges are flush and smooth before tightening the track sections all the way. If the two sections do not want to come into alignment easily, snug up your bolts, then use a hammer to bring the sides together. Never hit the track on top of the rail. Set one hammer on one side, tap the other side, those two sides should come together straight. If you have to go down a little bit, tap on the inside corner next to the rail. Step 19. Install the log dogs. Slide the movable log dog onto the backstop bar with the point of the dog facing the backstop. Set the assembly in your track at the desired location. Be sure to put the backstop bar on the same side of the track as the stop tabs in your track assembly. Then slide the 3 quarter inch rod through the track frame hole into the backstop tube and then into the other side of the track frame. Then tighten the bolt on the backstop bar to secure the rod from sliding out. Repeat the same steps to install the second dog at your desired location. Set the rod so that the ends protrude from each side of the track evenly. There should be about an eighth to a quarter of an inch on each side. Now raise and lower the dog and make sure that it moves freely up and down. Step 20. Placing the mill on the track. Raise the head approximately 3 inches before attempting to set the mill head on the track. 
lift one end of the mill onto the track, then slide forward until the other wheels hit and raise it up onto the track and roll it forward. Once you have the mill set on the track, you will now install the track stop tabs at the ends of the track. These prevent the mill from running off the track. Step 21. Set the blade to 1 inch off deck. The head needs to be set all the way down and over a cross member of the track. It should be set at 1 inch. If it does not measure 1 inch, you will make the adjustment using the off deck bolts that you installed earlier on each side of the mill. Raise or lower the mill head on either side using the adjusting bolt. Once you have both sides set at the same measurement, use the jam nut to lock the adjusting bolt into place. Step 22. Make sure that each side of the head raises together. To ensure square cuts, the head needs to raise evenly. To check this, start raising the head slowly with the winch and watch the head to see if it lifts evenly on both sides at the same time. When lowering the head, you will notice one side will touch the frame first and the other side will have a gap until you lower it all the way. Remove the guard, loosen the bottom nut on the eye bolt. Unscrew the bottom nut until the head starts lowering. When the off deck bolt starts touching the frame, stop turning the bottom nut and then turn the top one, drawing the two nuts together until you tighten the eye bolt securely. Now the mill head should raise evenly on both sides. Check it again to ensure that it is raising and lowering evenly. Step 23. Install the push bar and scale sticker. Attach the push bar to the operator side of the frame with the supplied hardware, as shown. Attach the sight glass. It should be mounted approximately three quarters of an inch in front of the scale bar, centered on the top of the frame using the provided self-tapping screw. It is best to drill an eighth inch pilot hole for the screw. Lower the head all the way down. It is best to clean the bar off prior to installing the sticker. Peel the backing from the adhesive tape starting at the top. Do not peel too much off to get started. Line the sight glass black line with the number one inch mark on the scale sticker. Center the scale sticker on the bar, removing the backing as you adhere it to the bar. Be careful not to stretch the sticker when installing. To make it easier, raise the head as you're adhering the sticker to the bar. This will help you keep it straight and get good adhesion. The sticker is wider than the bar, so roll the edges around the bar. Step 24, installing the lube tank system. Locate the lube tank kit hardware. 
First connect one end of the tubing to the tank. Then cut the tubing about 6 inches from the tank and install a shutoff valve. Then start securing the tubing to the frame with the zip ties as shown. Be sure not to over tighten the zip ties. Bring the tubing down the frame and then over to the head, feeding it underneath the clutch assembly, securing it with zip ties. Then bring it over to the side of the mill head and install the second shutoff valve securing it with zip ties over the connections to the mill head. Slide the movable guide all the way in and connect the lube line to the blade lube bracket on the adjustable guide. Then raise and lower your head to make sure there are no kinks that develop in your lube line from raising or lowering the head. Secure the lube tank in the bracket with the provided strap. Step 25. Install the plastic end caps. Locate the plastic end cap kit and using a soft mallet, install the plastic caps as shown. Do a walk around check and make sure that you do not forget to tighten any bolts, nuts or clamps on your sawmill prior to starting it. Now your sawmill is fully assembled and adjusted and you are ready to start sawing and producing good quality lumber. Make sure your blade tension is set and then start your sawmill and let it run for about 5 minutes. Always remember, when you're done sawing lumber with your mill, release the tension off the blade and make sure that the head is set all the way down. If you're not going to use the sawmill for a while, it is best to remove the blade, lightly oil it, and hang it inside out of the weather. Remember to read your operator's manual before operating the sawmill. There is a lot of good useful information in the manual about your sawmill you should use. Stay safe and happy sawing.